I'm going to teach and preach on a God-given leader is hard to find. My Lord. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's good. A God-given leader is hard to find. Amen. That's right. Gabby Bible this morning, uh, I'd like to go to Isaiah. A little lengthy reading this morning. I'm, I'm going to have to get rid of this so I can read my notes. No, sir. I might get fired up here in a minute. I don't know. Isaiah 55, beginning in verse 3. It says, Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall leave. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. It says, Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord the God. And for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are many ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led from forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break, be, uh, break forth before you into singing. And the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the fire tree, and instead of the briar shall come up with the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Elder, would you pray? Oh God, as we come to you, Lord, one more time, God, we thank you for the reading of this word, God. And Lord, I pray your blessings upon it that you should anoint Brother Goldman. God, I know, I believe this morning, God, just speak to every heart that's here, God. Uh, Lord, every home represented, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, have your way in this service, Lord. God, anoint and give, our, give us ears to hear this morning what your Spirit, God, would speak into our hearts. Uh, God, we give you all the praise for it in Jesus' name. I begin to read in Isaiah chapter 55. And I found, I ran across verse number four, where it said, Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Yes. And I began to really uh, look into what a leader really means and uh, what the leader is supposed to represent, what is the leader supposed to uh, do, what is his duties as a leader. And it says, A person who has commanding authority or influence. One that guides or conducts. And I begin to uh, look into this and I read and, and, and uh, look into uh, different leaders of the military. And I looked at uh, whenever uh, the Twin Tires hit Brother Becker, our leader of the United States of America, President Bush, went out there and he said, we're going to make a stand and we're not going to let... Amen. The world, uh, let, let, let this uh, Muslim group of people come uh, on our ground and fight in our country. We're going to take it back to them, Brother Hart. Uh, amen. We're living in a day and hour when we need leaders, Brother Becker, like yourself and I, to stand up to the church uh, and let the devil know we're not going to let the devil come in uh, to the church. Uh, we're not going to let, amen, uh, people come to church that bound uh, and oppressed and pressed uh, by the devil. But we got leaders going to stand up uh, and say, hey, does says God. God. Amen. Thus saith the word of God. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith God. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you for glory. Somebody give me an amen. Yeah. Amen. amen. We're living in a bad hour where people don't want leaders in their life. That's right. 
Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. They don't want somebody to command them, Brother Becker. Right. Yeah. You got it, brother. They don't want to hear, get rid of this and get rid of that no more. Uh -huh. They want a preacher to have a little tinkling message, yeah. a little joy, yeah. a little peace, a little long suffering, a little healing. Come on. Amen. They don't want a preacher to stand back and tell them to come out from amongst them and be separate. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank All you. All right. All right. I keep my coat to, uh, coat jacket on now so Brother Becker, when I've got a line, you just Dang. grab me on splits back there and, hey man, tell me to behave. <laughs> but we're living in a day and hour where people don't want to hear no uh, leadership. Come on. They don't want to have leadership in their life. Right. Man, if you're going to the wrong church, I'm here to tell you, if you're going to the wrong place, to fellowship there, you need a leader to stand up and say, hey, you don't need to go there no more. Yeah. Right. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. We, we've lost young people, amen, out of this church since I've been here, Brother Becker, that you had some good leadership in their life. Uh, amen. Whenever they was uh, uh, coming up 13, 14, 17, I was, I was running around here then. Uh, amen. I preached a little bit back then, a little bit, and I preached to them about ACDC, yeah. and I preached to them about Metallica. Amen. I told them, uh, amen, it's going to send them down the wrong road. I, I'm going to tell you, amen, them things will lead you to hell. Uh, amen. We don't hear nothing about hell anymore. Amen. Hellfire and brimstone uh, is going to fall on earth one of these days. Uh, Amen. If you don't have a leader in your life, a pastor in your life to tell you right from wrong, amen, you're going to fall by the wayside and become bad seed and die one of these days and go straight to hell. All right. All right. Amen. I come with a burden this morning. I didn't come just to rebuke. Come on. Come on. Amen. My parents told me if I was going to preach on hell, give them a way of escape. Hey Amen. You just hold on with me for a little while. I'm going to preach pretty straight this morning. Hey Amen. We're living in a day and hour where the man of God stands up behind the pulpit and preaches the ultra greater word of God. Hey Amen. Without fear and trembling, no matter who's here, no matter uh, who's around. Hey Amen. We got a man of God standing behind the pulpit with this black Bible. Hey Amen. It says, hey, if it's in this cover right here, we're going to live by it. Hey Amen. If, if it's in this black book right here, we're going to go by it. But there's a lot of things in that black book we can preach this morning. Yes, yes, yes. Man, I can bet you Sister Sarah, Sierra Miss back there. That's what I've always called her. <laughs> I couldn't remember her name, but by Sierra Miss. Yeah. That's what I call her. Yep. <laughs> she drove all the way from Truman just to hear me or where she lives at just to hear me preach. Man, she loved Brother Goldman, don't she? Hallelujah. Just joke. She brought up like me a little bit, though. Oh, yeah. When they was all teenagers, they all jumped in my ride every time we went somewhere. I'm glad I never got pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm from the front back, laying down on the floorboard. Yeah. <laughs> but I was glad I was able to influence one or two people. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Through their teenage years, Sister Julie, they hated to live for God. To find somewhere to pray. Man, a lot of people ain't, ain't prayed all week long when they come to church. And I know they ain't prayed all week because they don't pray when they come to church. All right, go ahead. My Lord. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Come on. I done done everything I said I wasn't going to do. Amen. We're living in a day and hour. Amen. Well, they don't want to, they don't take out the time to pray with their children. Huh? Come on. When's the last time you knelt down with your kids to pray before they went to bed? Hallelujah. To make sure they were saying some, some prayers. Yeah. Amen. My little four-year-old girl, man, you ought to see her get after it when she's getting ready to pray before we go to bed. Amen. She's been around our pastor and pastor wife so much she prays just like her. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, you see us this night. I pray you trust us and lead us. Man, she's she's getting after it. Help Uncle Tim. Help. Help this one. Help that one. Hallelujah. Help that Baptist lady. I seen that Taco Bell. <laughs> so we asked her, how'd you know she was Baptist? She said, Mama, she had a pair of pants on. 
Sometimes you go to Pentecostal church and they got them on too. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. I need to get back on track. A leader. Thank you, Lord. A leader will tell you how to live. That's right. Yes, he will. He will influence you to live for God. He, he, him and his wife will influence you, amen, to uh, do as he lives to do. Yes. Brother Becker, you come out here with me for a minute? I wish Sister, Sister Becker, well, somebody go get her for me, please. She, I know she's cooking, but I just want to use her for about five minutes, maybe. Yeah. You see this good man of God right here? If you say he's your pastor, you need to live like him. Hallelujah. Well, it's quiet. Come on, Amen. Bro, good. It's tight, but it's right. right. Brother Michael will be with you for a long time. I believe the first time I come, he was the only one still with him that I, that, when I was out there mentoring. Or you call that midterm. <laughs> Amen. I can remember them days. Amen. But this man of God right here, you know, you can tell how he feels that he's walking with the Lord. I mean, you can tell by his dress, you can tell by his actions, you can tell by where he goes, where he don't go. You can tell by what he stands for. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Just carry him up here for just a few minutes. I know you have to be on the back all the time, and you know. But this man of God right here has a good wife. That stands behind him. Yes. Hallelujah. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hey, Amen. If you call this couple right here your pastor and pastor's wife, you need to pray for them every day. Amen. I said every day. Amen. If you ain't praying for them, guess what? Your your spiritual leadership, Amen, is being tormented day in and day out. Amen. Because of your family, because of you. Amen. Because he's carrying the burden to see you to make it to heaven. And he's sitting up here trying to do his best. And, and whenever spirits from the hell comes against him while he's preaching. Amen. And y'all wonder why he's stressed out, going bald headed and getting gray headed and everything else. It's because we're worried about you if you're going to make it to heaven or not. You want to know what he stands for? On holding this dress, look at his wife. Hallelujah. Go ahead, bro. Hallelujah. Just give me two more minutes. Y'all just stay right there, please. Just look. Take a look at her. Every time I've been here, that's what she's looked like. I've seen them out to eat. I told my wife the first time I met her was at Barn Hills. Man, brother Becker, he was all kicked back like he was on a hot date. Man, you ever seen him? He had that old leg kicked out there like this. He was looking at Sister Becker, boy. He was, he was admiring what God has given her. And I walked by there and I seen her at the bar. And I seen where she sat down at, so I knew she had to be a preacher's wife. I'm going to find out who they are. And I found out who they are. And I've been friends with them for seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know how long it's been. But I've been friends with them ever since. Hey, we've been through thick and we've been through thin. Right. Man. That's right. We've been through battles together. Yes, we have. We fought the good fight of faith. We stood for what's right and what's wrong. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. You want to know how what he stands for? Just follow him around. Y'all know him better than I do. I come around once a year. Y'all's here every day. Have y'all ever seen him any different, Brother Michael? No. The same. And Brother Michael's been with him ever since I've known him. I'm here to tell you, this man don't change. You need to stand behind him. That's right. I said, you need to stand behind him. You need to pray for him. You need to pray for his wife, because she's carrying just as much of a burden as he does. Right. Amen. Amen. Sister Bernie, if you're need to be in the back, y'all, I just want to... Man, I'm telling you, this pastoral authority. I said, this pastoral, it's, it's, it's scriptural. That's right, man. Yes, sir. When are you going to let the reins off of your marriage whenever it's going to rock bottoms and say, hey, Pastor Becker, I need some help? All right. Come on. All right. Y'all about to get me fired up up in here. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. There's people here today that don't like what I'm saying. 
I can feel I can feel the my batteries might be going dead. Even in my chest. Slowing down a little bit, ain't it? You gonna let this good man of God influence you to live for God? You gonna let him hold? You gonna let him take you by the palm of your hand and say, follow me as I follow Christ? There have been some of them here, Brother Becker. I could have told you they weren't going to be here very long. Because I followed them and know what they have been and what they have not been. All right. Yes, Jesus, sir. Jesus. Jesus. Yes. What do you really think a pastor is? Does somebody stand up here and collect money? And stand back here like it's a job to say, hey, do this and do that? No, do you think his job is to come up here on Sunday morning or, or Sunday night or Thursday night and lead service and, and get in here and try to pump and prime? you think his job is to be a cheerleader? No, <coughs> Getting tight, Brother Becker. All right. His job ain't to come here and every, every service day in and day out and say, hey, it's the joy of the Lord living in your heart. And we all sit there. I've got it. I spoke in tongues 25 years ago. I've got it. I spoke in tongues 50 years ago, Brother Hart. I've got it. Well, oh, I've got it. I've got it. Give me the key of seat. I've got it. I've got it. Something about the power of the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I've got it. Oh, I boy, we sing that song and we ain't got it. Go ahead. We sing victory is mine, man. We all jump and shout, praise God. But Monday morning, victory ain't ours. But well, what happened to your victory? Go ahead. Come on, preach, brother. That's it. Preach. What happened to the joy of the Lord that is your strength? Yes. Right. On Tuesday, when the devil done beat you up. Yes. And Wednesday rolls around, you ain't prayed all week. You ain't talked to the man of God, say, man of God, I'm struggling. You ain't came up here at the altar in month after month after month and say, God, I need some help. Man, how do you expect to make it to heaven not talking to God? Oh, we're busy. Man, we got a busy life. I bet you none of you are busy as I am. Wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, go to work. I get home at 3 o'clock. Hey, Amen. I grab a hold of that mower, Brother Becker. And I come in about dark 45. And I get there and I find time to take time, Brother Michael, with my children to pray before they go to bed. It might be 5 minutes, it might be 10. Hallelujah. But we're trying to train them up to pray. Yes. Man, they can work an iPhone already. And they can work an iTablet. And they can work a smartphone or whatever you want to call them, man. They, man, they are, their, their brains are geared that way. They can do it. Man, they're smarter than I am on them things. Man, I just know how to make a phone call on them, man. they grab them, they... Have my phone today, man, and lay it down. And they already know how to take a picture with it. They're doing this lot. I'm like, yeah. wow, man, how they do that? <laughs> They're geared that way. Yeah. Right. Man, okay. We're gonna change you. <laughs> just, like, just like a devil. Ain't it I, I ain't even gotta have one of them. I walk out here with y'all, you know, and talk to you. <coughs> but a lot of them, they don't know how to pray, man. That's it. Our young people don't know how to pray. They don't know how to get a hold of God. When, when that prayer pressure hits them, they don't know how to get down on their knees and say, God, I need your help. God, I need your mercy. God, I need some strength. They don't know how to do that. You know why? Because we have took out the time to teach them how to pray. Go ahead. Like, right through them battles. We don't let the pastor stand up and tell them, hey, right here's how you do it. You got to pray. You got to fast. You got to seek God's face. You know the same thing. That's it. That's it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't going to be a day when they need to pray for themselves. That's right. 
Right. How many times have you had to pray for yourself since you've been married, Sister? Say our miss? A lot. Some of you ladies on the back row back here giggling, let me get on y'all for a little while. Ain't your name Miranda? Yeah. I thought so. Let me get on you for a little bit. Hey man, you ain't even married yet. You need to find a place to pray. Right. I can pick on them because I know them for a little while. Now I think that's your son over in the corner over there. I'm going to get on him for a little while too. Hey man, at least you didn't wear ACDC because I got on that this morning probably. We're living in a day and hour where our young people, all they want to do, Brother Becker, is sit back <coughs> and let the middle age and mom and daddy and grandma and grandpa have church and I'm coming because mom and daddy makes me come. Oh, yeah. I'm coming just because Brother Becker expects me to be there. Man, you need to find a place to pray and get a burden for God because you know why there's coming a day and hour. Amen. When the Son of Man is going to come back, Son of God is going to come back and split the eastern skies. Amen. He's going to take the church without spot or without blemish. And he's going to call them out of here. And those that are left, amen, behind. Amen. They're going to burn with burning heat. I wish I had a mom and daddy, Brother Becker, that took me to a church that stood for truth. Hey Amen. Except when his daughter went lesbian, praise God, he just kept on letting them play on the piano. All right. Thank you. If I call the name, everybody here will know him. So I'm going to leave it alone. I'm here to tell you. Hey Amen. I sat there by myself at 14 years old, Brother Michael. No young people around, I was by myself. Sit there, peer pressure hit me. I didn't know how to get a hold of God. I can't remember one time my mom and daddy sat down with me to pray. Not one time can I ever remember. My grandma and grandpa Price called, their, called me in for prayer time. Not one time I can remember. My grandpa go to fear God. I only stayed with him for about two weeks when I was 12 years old. Grandpa Goldman prayed every day, morning at 5 o'clock, read his Bible. Brother Becker, he didn't let me stay up at 12, 1 o'clock talking on the telephone. He said, boy, I go to bed, you go to bed with me. You understand that? I said, yes, sir. Man, we went fishing every morning. Worked the garden. Prayed every day. But at 14 years old, I didn't have a pastor in my life, Brother Becker. I didn't have somebody to say, just say it, God, in my life. When peer pressure of football teams and basketball teams and baseball teams arrived, I didn't have nobody to lean on. I ain't always been 6'2", 250. At one time, I was about 6'2", 150. Brother Becker, I came to this church back then and listened to them sing, and man, it was good. I went to a bunch of singings. Man, I went to a bunch of fellowship meetings. We need a pastor in our life to lead us and guide us. The Bible says a straight and narrow pathway yes. that leads to everlasting. But few there be that find it. That's right. Scripture said, but broad and wide. Yes. Huge. Yes. Huge. Mm -hmm. Boy, they run into it. Fast as they man, they graduate high school, Brother Becker. 18, man, I'm 18. I'm, oh. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm solid. I'm, I'm, I'm 100%. I don't need no preacher in my life. My Lord. You know what's wrong with the church world today? They have a Jezebel spirit. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. That's the truth, brother. A preaching killing spirit. A prophet killing spirit. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yes. 
That's it. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. That's some true preaching. Yes. The church of today, they have the spirit of Jezebel on them. <coughs> they don't want to hear sound doctrine. Hallelujah. They don't want to hear, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. They don't want to hear the only way you're going to enter in by repenting of your sins and being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. They don't want to hear that. They try to choke good preachers out. They don't want to hear about homosexuality and lesbianism anymore. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right, brother. You're doing all right. Hallelujah. Well, long as Josh Goldman living, I'll preach it in the penitentiary. Hallelujah. If that's where they put me in, because homosexuality is going to lead them all to damnation. That's right. That's right. That is right. That's a good book. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Man. I know y'all ain't got that problem up here at ASU in this in this college town, man. You know, you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't got that problem. Man, what y'all talking about? We got a small college, little bit old, you know, whatever they call them, two-year colleges, community college. That's what they call them. Hey, man, I graduated from that thing. Y'all probably don't believe that, but I do. Uh, for welding. But it ain't for preaching. It ain't seminary school. So I ain't had none of that yet. But, but we, go back, we are living in damn hour. Hey man, where it's everywhere, man. Man, you can't go to Walmart. You can't even go to Walmart. It's Stuttgart, man. You know, we we about 80% uh, African Americans there, you know. And about 15% uh, African Mexicans. Or whatever you call them guys. <laughs> and, and, and about five percent of us is white. But man, you go to you go to Walmart, man, you ain't even see Oh my lord, man, they they ooh, Jesus, I lose. Hey man, get me fired up quick. When I walk into Walmart and see them homosexuals. And they know what I stand for. They boy, they hug up real close. Man, they, you know, I was, I was cutting these apartment complexes. I, I'm on grass, and, and I was cutting these apartment complexes for a brother in our church, man. You know, a brother in our church, he, he asked me to cut the yard. I, I'll cut your yard. I give him a good deal, man. I, I, I'm going to take about an hour, four to five minutes. I give him $35, man. That's pretty cheap, man. Yes, sir. Man, that's a blessing from the Lord. I, you know, I get $35 to pay for my mower, and he gives $35 for me to cut his grass. And he ain't got nothing. You know, and man, he got this, uh, you know, he got this little doom buggy. I call it doom buggy, a little slug bug. Y'all don't tell more than the Volkswagen the Beatles, whatever I'm thinking they're called. And it had K1 and K2 on the back of the uh, license plate. <laughs> and look here now. K1 and K2. Well, I started scratching my head. You know, I, I, I knew who they were supposed to be driving this vehicle, you know. And I know the lady, she worked for Terminator, you know, she's been to my house. But I didn't know. I knew she looked like a man. But she got that short haircut like mine, she sticks it up in there, you know, like. <laughs> said, Julie, man, I smell something out there cooking, man. It smells good, you know. I go around there and there's another woman cooking. I said, oh my Jesus. <laughs> I said, shine down, kill it, boo. And y'all know Josh Goldman. He ain't very quiet. <laughs> when I came out there and said, how you doing, Josh? I ain't like I was at the heart. I give her a little love, you know, a little, little hug. You know, she my, she my, you know, my, my grandma. <laughs> now give her a little hug, man. What's wrong with you? I said, I'm sorry, but your spirit I don't agree with. I said, I love your soul, but I don't love your spirit. That you let your soul carry. But they go to church. Hello. Hello. But they ain't got a pastor. You know what they got? They got a hireling. You know what a hireling is? Yes, sir. Somebody gets in your billfold and says, I'll, I'll preach what you tell me to as long as you give me $100. Mm -hmm. I'll preach what you want me to preach as long as you feed me. I'll preach what you want me to preach as long as you keep on coming. 
Man, I passed the sign up there. He said, love lifted me straight to heaven. I was like, yeah, you don't think love lifted you straight to heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Baker, there's a lot of hirelings in the land of days. Yes. yes. That's right. That's right. I don't have time to go through all my notes today. I'm only on the second page. Hallelujah. <clears throat> don't ask you a question. I'm going to read some more scriptures in a minute. But if your pastor told you to quit doing something, would you really do it? <coughs> would you quit doing it? Okay. No. My love, I'm going to be honest with you, I am a sinner when it comes down to playing golf. Now, if a sin is to go play golf, I'm, I'm a sinner. I, I like to play. It's relaxing to me. I work all the time. If I get time to go play around golf, I might go play around golf. Now, I ain't lying about it. I, I'm telling you, I'm, being, I'm confessing my faults to my brothers and sisters. Like the Bible says, y'all pray for me that I can control that spirit. But not one time I have, I have I ever missed church to go play around the golf. Right. Not one time I ever missed a prayer meeting to go play around the golf. Right. Now, I have been to uh, shires and you know church functions, and, 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 and a buddy in the church come up to me, hey, bro, go. And Bob looking around and see if anybody heard it. <laughs> what time you want to leave, buddy? <laughs> hey, we've been there for 30 minutes already. Right. They've seen us. How can you miss it? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Big old fat man like me. How can you miss him being there? Hallelujah. So I, I go tell my wife, I'm going to have him. I'm going to go really cold. We're going to go, you know, she already knows where I'm, where I'm going with him. Especially. But we was there. Man, that day, they, people out of church, but not going to walk for I've heard me hate it. But a lot of people lay out just over a little toe week. Now, Brother Becker, my nose has been running for two days. And I'm afraid that I got a uh, flu. Now, Brother. Why do all y'all sit on the back for, man? You know, I don't have to walk back here so far if y'all sit up close. <laughs> you ever have that problem, Brother Becker? Oh, yeah. Do you ever walk out here with them? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> A lot of us lay out of church just because we want to. That's right. <coughs> but we come up with some kind of excuse. <coughs> I'm sorry, but I'm going to make it Sunday school. You know, I had this sore on the inside of my lip for about three weeks. Um, and it just won't go away, Pastor. And if I was your pastor, I'd tell you to go get some Listerine and wash it about three or four times a day, and that sore will go away, I promise you. <laughs> That's a good preaching, yes, right come on. <laughs> You know you're a good preacher when nobody's saying amen and they're all smiling. That's a good preacher. You know what a pastor is also? I looked up the word pastor to see what it meant. It talks about a, uh, let me find it right quick. I want to make sure I'm right. I might not have it on here. There it is. A pastor. A spiritual overseer. Comma. Herdsman. Anybody know what a herdsman is? Now, Jesus is talking to Peter. And I think it was Luke chapter 21. He said, Peter, lovest thou me? Man, Jesus, you know I love you, man. What you talking about, cuz? I used to love the fish, man. But you came along one day and said, hey, take up your nets and follow me. Now make your fishes of man. Man, you know I love you, Jesus. Feed my sheep. Yes. <laughs> hey Peter. Love us thou me. Come on. Man, he just, you know, just told that Jesus got trying to give him a hard time. You know, sometimes the pastor's trying to give you a hard time, but trying to get your attention at the same time. Oh. Love us thou me, Peter. Peter, you know, Jesus, you know I love you. Feed my sheep. Uh -huh. 
Now I can imagine Peter over there, you know, maybe be sitting on his on his altar or sitting on his workbench or sitting there uh knitting a net or messing around or something like that, you know. Uh man, he might be separating the buffalo from the catfish. And, and the suckers and all them other kind of fish, brims and crappies and damn crappy back there. I heard this thing up, you had some crappie fry. I ain't had nothing in a while. Yeah. And the third time, Jesus got his attention. That's it. He said, hey, Peter, <coughs> lovest thou me? Uh-huh. Hey, <coughs> Peter, Jesus, what's your problem, man? You know I love you. Yes. Now, Peter, kind of like Brother Goldman. You know, we might have a little temper in us a little bit. Yeah. <coughs> well, if none of y'all got no temper problem, y'all just go ahead and praise God and pray for Brother Goldman. Because if his wife don't answer the telephone after three times, I call her, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and I don't leave voicemails. I pay that bill, but I'm not going to expect them to answer, you know what I'm saying? Huh? Hallelujah. I really don't pay it, she does, but, you know. All of us men, we got good financial advisors, don't we? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, Becky, your wife take care of the finances for you? Yes, but you're the overseer, right? <laughs> he's just like I am. He's just like I am. He knows that he can trust his wife. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, hey, man. I say he knows he can trust his wife. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To do the right thing. Yes. Not to go shopping online and blow all the money. <laughs> <laughs> he knows she's not going to go by uh, what's up, uh, dress bar or whatever. I don't know where the women shop at. <coughs> Kato, huh? that's it, praise God. Man, I love Kato's hallelujah. Boy, they go on Kato, boy, they hop in the skip it. Woo! Hallelujah! They get more spiritual going to Kato than in the house of God. Victory is my go to Kato with my husband, Daddy Porter Dallas. Hope something's on sale, so I'm not three or four of them, praise God. <laughs> Instead of thinking, hey, the preacher don't come by, he might need a little gas in his tank. <laughs> now, I ain't preaching for money this morning, by the way. I'm going to tell y'all something. It takes it to live. Yes. That's why I work about four different jobs. I got 300 babies. Now, I don't believe in. If you're healthy enough to work, you need to be working instead of being on welfare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I grew up in Truman, Arkansas, for all you that don't know me. I know some of y'all seen me when I lived in Truman. Come on, sit there, that right? I remember. Amen. Since Carrie, I grew up there, and I, every time I go back by there, I was like, man, why my mom and daddy moved me to Truman for? What is in Truman? <laughs> You're the best old machine factory there back when Brother Maxwell was a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> then they turned to a Bywood place or something. I don't know what it is. But why did they move me to Truman, Brother Michael? I'll never know. I guess because the pastor over there called my daddy. That he loved, man, he loved being leadership, but he just didn't like to be the influencer and the uh, conductor that he needed to be. Hallelujah. And I'm not down with my daddy. I love my daddy. He's a good man. But he just needed some somebody to tell him right from wrong. He needed somebody to tell him they line up. <laughs> Boys getting quiet. <laughs> We're living in a day and hour where like my mom and dad done with me to Truman, I mean, I, there ain't nothing there. Still ain't nothing there. No. A honky tonk. That, that old Main Street, I can remember it. Because yep. I had to walk by it every day to go to school. I walked to school. Now, I wonder what kind of influence I had on a 15-year-old boy. I wonder what kind of influence, hey, amen, I I would go to church, man. I, they, brother Becker, I'd go. But it wasn't no 
conviction there. There was no conviction. You didn't feel. Everybody was doing good, man. We was all 70 years old and on our last leg, about to slip out of the lower land. And... <laughs> so, Julian, man, I'm trying to get them pumped up, fired up, my test fire, and the whole time I knew I wasn't doing it right myself. So, But they thought, man, they were behind me, you know what I mean? But then I started going here, there, and yonder trying to find fellowship, Brother Becker. And man, I found it everywhere I went. I just didn't. There wasn't no pastoral authority. There wasn't a man of God standing up saying, Thus saith God. They was all preaching the same thing. Come as, come as you are. Do what you want to. And just praise God. Help me build this church. I'm not down on the church people. I'm not down on the saints of God, but I'm here to tell you, it's going to take a pastor in your life <coughs> that you can say, hey, that's my man of God. Don't talk bad about him. Don't look at him wrong. Because I don't pray for you. Bob said, lay hands on the old man's son, but you can talk about my pastor. I get round up pretty quick. Like the old crank phones. I said, you start talking about a preacher around me, boy, I get fired up. Praise God. You know why? Because I heard it all my life. We had them for lunch. We had them for breakfast. We had them for mid afternoon snack. Most of y'all only know what breakfast is anymore because we don't wake up till 11 o'clock. So that's brunch. Brunch. What you call Brunch. Y'all don't know what to do if y'all woke up at 6 o'clock and found an altar to pray at. Jeez. So the bear, they wouldn't know what it was, but wake up at 5 o'clock and go run that bell. They ain't, some of them ain't seen the sun rise since the sun started rising. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Most of them like my wife, praise God. She got a husband that runs around everywhere. You know, we didn't get home uh, Friday night about 2 30, 3 o'clock, something like that. Man went out there. I'm 32 years old, man. I was out there playing basketball with a bunch of 17 year olds till 1:30 in the morning. Amen. You say I was once young, but now I'm old. Yeah. Never seen a righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. But I think I'm about, you know, 20 in my heart. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel good. Man, I lost 40 some pounds in about four months. I don't, man. They'd be all kinds of different which ways, you know what I mean, brother? <laughs> I, I, I bought them when I was fat, brother Becker. Huh? Hallelujah. But you know what? My old ticker started hurting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fluid, man, my old. <coughs> Went on that little diet. Told my wife something going on diet. She said, no, yeah. That's the kind of support I had about it. No, yeah. No, yeah. No, you ain't. 281 pounds. No, you ain't. Just keep on eating. <laughs> I'm going to keep on cooking. Hey, look, my wife, mom, and dad was Yankees. Like Brother Hart is. So I don't know what salt and pepper is. You know what I'm saying? Now, if anybody else in here is a Yankee, I apologize. But I'm Southern. I want to give you some southern hospitality. Yeah. So my wife, man, she we got married, my brother. She had a good pastor in her life. And she learned how to bowl team at their house or make team, whatever they done it. But they didn't do it right because they didn't have enough sugar. That's right. <laughs> man, you gotta have two and a quarter cups of sugar to make a good cup of tea. Oh yeah. 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 I finally got y'all spiritual. <laughs> to make a good steak, a ribeye, oh, here we go. you gotta get a salt and pepper and a little free old seed. Hey. Yeah. And that's all you need. You ain't got to marinate it in nuts. Right. Just rub it down a little bit. <laughs> and call me over for steak. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
You know, a good preacher likes good steaks. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. Ain't that right? That's right. Have any of y'all ever invited y'all's pastor over for a steak? Hey, you ain't got to answer that. <laughs> I invited mine over a couple weeks ago. Went up to him Sunday night at church. Oh, with that McDonald's. Man, everybody likes McDonald's? Yeah. Man, our church loves McDonald's. Oh, yeah. If we ain't feeding afterwards, man, we all at McDonald's. Do you hear me? That's gossip center. <laughs> Praise God. That's church on Sunday night. If you want to hear the gossip, go to McDonald's. Because they all know the gossip about it. Hey, man, they, oh, so we were sitting there at McDonald's. I told him, I said, man, I can cook better than McDonald's can. I said, if I take my wife's short can, I said, we're going to have bean, taters, and cornbread Wednesday night. Come to the house. Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah. Man, we invited some more folk. We had about 20 something there, I think. I don't know, 17. I don't know how many was there. But they brought some gumbo, man. That gumbo didn't hold us. Hold us. Hold us. Quarter. A light to them bean, taters, and cornbread. All right. And I went on my diet that night with the heart. <laughs> and I tore it up. <coughs> and my pastor said that and tore it up too. And I said, it's better than the Benny Hines ain't. Y'all probably don't want Benny Hines. That's a steakhouse in Little Rock. And uh, he said, man, it is. Because he don't like he don't like that play where they cook in front of you. He said, give him some southern cooking. Yeah. He don't like them Japanese steakhouses. Now, I like them, but he don't. But, and I told him, I said, Pastor, you ain't, I ain't cooked for you in eight years since we've been here. I said, won't you come for bean and thirty corn bread? I said, does your family like bean and thirty corn bread? And now, y'all got to remember my pastor's wife about this big around. <laughs> Real thin. I'm telling you, she's thin. I said, now, look, you're going to have to eat my, my wife's cooking. Make me feel bad if you don't. So I think she had that much beans and that much cornbread and that much tater. And she ate. You know what? I said, every once in a while, I'm not saying do it every, every week. I'm not saying do it every other week. But y'all to call him up and say, hey, Pastor. I thought I'd invite you for supper tonight. You know what? Some of y'all are afraid to invite him to your home because he might preach to you the next service. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You know, a pastor's got the right to preach on what he sees. Evangelists don't, but Pastor does. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit here in a few minutes. If y'all let me read some verses right quick, I'll, I'll come down. Of whom we have many things to say and heard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Dull of hearing. For when for the time you ought to be teachers, so what they're saying is you've been around for a little while. And you should be teaching by now. You have many that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Be strong, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of us have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I wanted to start my message right there with that scripture. But I knew I better not because I've been on good and evil for an hour and a half. Brother Derek, we have people that's been in church for 25 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. Am I over everybody yet? 70 years, Brother Hart, my brother Hart might be here for 20 years, 90 years, I don't know. But <laughs> maybe 100 years, I don't know. But you might be in church all your life. But we're still having to treat you like a babe. That's it. That's it. I wish somebody had a baby in here. I'd, I'd pick it up and pat it on the rear for a little while. Because that's exactly how a lot of people are. If their pastor don't pat them like a baby and burp them every once in a while, 
They get their feathers ruffled. All right, preach now. Come on. Hallelujah. You got that right. They get their feathers ruffled, Brother Hart. You ever had your feathers ruffled? Okay. Might I tell you why I get mine every time I go to church because my pastor don't slack off on me none. <laughs> Man, he's on me all the time. Just let y'all know that. <laughs> all the time. He be preaching about husband and wife. He said, Brother, y'all be treating your wife right. Man, yeah, look at her. Praise God. Smiled all the time and hallelujah. Man, she got prophesied one time with depression. If you marry that boy, you'll be depressed all the rest of your days. <laughs> <laughs> well, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we got married, I ain't seen the first day yet. <laughs> How can you be depressed when your husband makes you smile all the time? Make that right to do it. Boy, she loves her, man. <laughs> Well, I'm they never fuss, they never fight, they never have an argument. Boy, he just says, yes, ma'am, let's go. Praise God. <laughs> and if y'all believe that, just hang it on. I'll tell you another one here a little bit. <laughs> because if you're married and you live, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm trying to be a pastor, but if I got a line, check me out. If you're married and you can't say I love you to your wife before you go to bed at night, Brother Michael, you need to pray through. Sure. Now, I've been to in the bed before, and so mad at her, I went to the church over, put her in the choke and said, woman, get in line. <laughs> now, any of you other husbands ever been that way? Huh? How about it, little boy? You ever just want to? Give me an amen. You shut your head. Hallelujah. But the feeling's mutual. I bet there's been times when the women want to hit us with the frying pan that she's up cooking our breakfast with every morning. Boy, when them good old iron skillets, you know, one of them thick ones, boy, man, whoo, that season just right, got that good tie on back to Jesus. Glory to God. <laughs> and what they do with it? You know, they, they cook it, they're there scrambling on me, bro, about four o'clock in the morning, you know, that truck, boy, just get with it. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Well, good help, you're going to work. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Just like mine, praise God. Bam! Get out of the bed so you can go to work. <laughs> bam! Leave me alone. And bam! Bam! And go make us some money. <laughs> Just to be honest, I never wake my wife up when I go to work. Try to not to. Because I know she loves her beauty sleep. And she don't need no more of that. But I'm here to tell you, I got a good wife. And you got a good wife. And the best thing to do is just go pray through. Because if you got a good one, she's going to take care of you in the long run. Hallelujah. That's right, brother. And women, if you got a man to get up and dust his shoes off every day and his work boots and get out there and hustle and bustle. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this day and I, we ain't got chase keepers of the home no more. We got chase keepers of uh, the grocery store and, and chase keepers of. Walmart, Chase Keepers of Kato's, and Chase Keepers of JCP, and hallelujah. Anybody ever read the Bible that said women be Chase Keepers of the home? <coughs> Lord, All right, mercy. Let me find it right quick. Google that, Sister Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> no, Bob does say that. Ain't that right, brother? Well, you know what we got this day and time? We got too many bill collectors calling and saying, hey, Josh Gover, uh, your truck due is past due 10 days. If you don't mind, they make arrangements to uh, you to make your truck pay. And I said, all right, call 501 206 7142 and she'll make arrangements. <laughs> Just pass the book. But you know what? Your pastor can't pass the book. That's right. That's right. That's right. Who's he going to pass the buck to? Huh? Who's he going to Who's he going to holler at? <coughs> Y'all probably wish he didn't call Billy Goldman to preach today. I'm going to tell you something, this man right here. Hey, I quit calling a pastor. You know why? Because they think you're aggravating them when you got to have a place to preach. I, I ain't got to preach. You think I got to holler in this microphone to preach? 
Mine's straight them out all the time and work with the heart. I've been there reading my Bible, man, here they come. What you reading, Goldman? Hey, Jabber. They call me Jabber. Hey, Jabber, what are you reading, Jabber? <laughs> man, I wrote a song about it. We got some musicians up there in church. Boy, get that old guitar out of that boy back. I saw the light. I saw the light. Yeah, they don't know what light they saw, but they singing about it. <laughs> so I started taking tracks up there to work. One God, half a spot, thumb and talking, holy roller. Born again believer. Man, I lay them out, I lay them out all over the place up there. Where no one in maintenance shop, man. We just lay them out. Here and there, young boy. I start seeing some of them disappear. Uh -huh. They quit talking to me about the Bible. Because I always had an answer for them. Uh -huh. <laughs> and if I didn't have an answer, I went and found the answer and came back and talked to them a little bit yeah. about it. Because I'm truly not a Bible scholar if y'all can't tell that. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. But you know what? I got a pastor in my life that preaches to me. He says, Thus saith God, Thus, it's in the Word of God, so do it. Yes. I'm going to title this message, just do it, like night. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, if we said it, just do it. That's it. We need to be more spiritual, able to discern from good and evil. Yes. I've got to hurry up. Romans 10 and 14. How then shall they call on him who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who have they have not heard? And, shall, and, and how shall they hear without a preacher? Young lady, I don't even know who you are, but I'm going to tell you something. You need a preacher in your life. Mama, Daddy, Grandma, and Grandpa, I don't know who you are, but you've got to have a preacher in your life. That's right. Brother Baker, you've got to have a preacher in your life. That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. That's why he calls evangelists and other pastors to come by here and preach. Because he wants to be accountable for the Word of God. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. Jesus. So, uh, 17 of uh, Romans 10. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. Yes. Now, I was studying on this. And how can you hear unless they be sent? Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Revelation said, uh, how can I hear without a, he a, a ear? Yeah. 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 You know what? If you got a deaf ear, brother heart, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Amen. But let him turn them whistling ear nays down, and he won't be able to hear nothing no more, like my dad in law. Man, my dad in law, man, he, his wife over there get up there, and they been at the kitchen table, and she said this close to him. And she says, she says, you know, Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> and you sing my word. <laughs> that like he got earwax coming out of his ears. <laughs> and he got a little knob in there. And he's turning her down. But he can hear very well with them on. <laughs> Charlie, can you hear me, Charlie? He said, over oh, we're I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> Charlie! <coughs> Don't let Ruthie marry that golden boy. He's dangerous. Huh? He's dangerous. He's crazy. And I was crazy. And I still am probably. But I was crazy for Jesus. And when I finally found me a pastor who preached to me the Word of God without fear and trembling, without backing down, <coughs> Brother Becker, when everything went south, he stood right beside me. He said, Brother Goldman, hang in there, Brother Josh. Now I'm going to skip a little bit here. I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm about done. Now I'm going to read a few scriptures out of Ephesians chapter 4. And if we all can live by these scriptures, yeah. we will be doing real good. Mm -hmm. 4 and 11. 
It says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. No more children tossed to and fro. You know what that tells me, Brother Ben? That tells me not to be a church hopper. If I'm sitting underneath a good man, why leave him? That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Now some of y'all can shut me down and shut me up all you want to. If you're a church hopper, you need to be settled. When Brother Brecker ruffles your feathers and then she, and she shoots a 12-gauge bump shot at you, <laughs> not in the flesh but in the spirit, and a couple pellets hit real close to home, real close to the heart. Yeah. Don't be like a little child and run. That's right. <coughs> Brother Becker, hope I'm not hurting nobody's feet. But this is the Word of God. That's right. Yes. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness. Whereby they lie and wait to deceive. Now, I will stop there again one time. Can you send me goods to the loop? All right, just make sure. Now, now, we have a lot of pastors. I could have went over and uh, I believe it was uh, Proverbs or somewhere over there. I could have found a bunch of scripture on old Jeremiah. That's what it said. About a bunch of pastors that didn't preach the truth and deceive many people. And they, uh, they, uh, they weren't herdsmen, they were disherdsmen. In other words, they spread it, uh, gossip and backbite one another, and the flock left. Oh, Scattered the flock. Yep. That's right. Now, we have a problem with that in 2015. Man, we get one, we get one man mad at another man, and we just go 20 miles down the road and start a church. Right. Hallelujah. That's right. And then we'll call them on the cell phone and say, hey, why don't you come over here for a little while? Hallelujah. I guess none of y'all ever had a pastor do that, had you? <coughs> Brother Goldman, come over here, man. I had one comment. I'll make you the youth leader. You would uh you be over the youth, man. You would be preaching to them. Man, you can do this and you can do that. Brother Goldman, we need you, man. Your wife can work in the music ministry. Man, we need you, Brother Goldman. I was an evangelist for five years. Full time on the road. Man, I passed more than us because we was young, geared up, excited about living for God. Hey, I had to turn them all down. You know why? Because it was not the will of God. I cannot stand a proselyting person. Y'all know what a proselyter does? Mm. The head, even Christ. For whom? The whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of our every part. Make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as others Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that it is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. Man, we ain't got no greedy in it, greediness in the house, do we? A little greedy. They ain't giving nothing to them. Hallelujah. Man, I, I got it. They ain't getting greedy. Man, just. Anybody ever seen somebody that was greedy? You ever seen a pastor that was greedy? 
Yes, sir. Help us, Jesus. Where was that, Brother Bear? Y'all follow along? <laughs> but ye have not so learned Christ. It's so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitfulness lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man. Now everybody knows when we come to God, we become a new preacher. Right. You know what that means? That means the old man is dead. They yeah. don't even go back digging up bones. We don't do like that country singer said, digging up bones, digging up bones. Says, well, they don't need digging up bones. Let that old man die. I'm going to tell you, I was very private. Very private. Man, if anybody knew me, I thought I was a bomb, Jack. I turned 18, man, I was a little... Worked out there in the sun, man. I wasn't doing for God. I wore shorts and tank top. Man, took the shirt off. I had a dark reflection, Brother Becker. Man, I had a dark head and dark eyes. What the hell? Well, I put them pink shirts on, man, go out there cruising, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I thought I was good looking, Brother Becker. Oh, yeah. But I found out I wasn't so hot when I looked in the mirror a couple times. And I seen that I had teeth that was. Stained up, gapped up, and decaying. And I wasn't smiling at nobody. Well, I wasn't cheating for nobody. The wages of sin, Brother Becker, is causing me to die. And I wouldn't let a pastor come in my life and pull me out of the flames of hell. Church family, I'm here to tell you today, you need a pastor to preach to you the unadulterated Word of God. That's right. You need to release your family to your pastor. I'm closing. Your pastor needs to know your problems. Because if he don't, that old man's going to rise back up. If that pastor don't know how to pray for you when you don't know how to pray for yourself, guess what? That old man will rise back up. And you'll be walking in the flesh. You'll be doing the things of the flesh. You'll be walking in darkness. You'll be letting the blind lead the blind. And guess what happens? Both of them falls in the ditch. Church, don't you know something? I ain't talked to Brother Becker. I texted him Thursday to ask him, was we still on for this weekend? He texted back and said, yes, sir. He didn't ask me to preach this message. I prayed, fasted, saw God's face. That's what God gave me. Church, you need a pastor. Young ladies, you need to listen to your pastor. Young men, you need to... Man, if he... You know where you need to be at, young men? Young ladies, you know where you need to be at? Right here on these front rows instead of back in the back. You need to get a prayer life. Hallelujah. You need to get a place to find with God and get a burden for the lost. That's right. That's it. That is right. That's it. Most of you got Facebook and Instagrams and picture and texts and, and uh, follow that junk call. I don't know what I was calling no more, Brother Josh. Snapchat. Man, let me take a picture send to my boyfriend. <laughs> How are you doing, honey? <laughs> and then you ask them to go pray at the altar. You know, and they're down there about two minutes. If that. But you know what? They get on that Instagram and that Facebook and they're there for hours. That's right. For hours. You put them in front of a TV with a cartoon on, they're there for hours. All right, preach to us. That's the truth. But they don't know how to pray. <coughs> Whose fault is it? It ain't the baby's fault. No. Right. 
I said it's not the baby's fault. Right, brother. That's good. That's the truth, yeah. That's the truth. God help you. Mama, Daddy, if your child is spending that much time on Facebook and Instagram and television and internet, you need to pray through. Hello, somebody. Are y'all with me? That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the truth. Internet's a trick of the devil. Right. Right. We got a young lady in our town about three blocks away from me. Fifteen years old, Brother Becker, come up missing. Left her house, you know what she had? Her phone charger and her phone. You know what that tells me? She done found some old pervert on the internet and probably gone to Mexico. So we had dolls rescued, we had fire department rescued, we've had searches. We've been everywhere looking for it. Nowhere to be found. Been to the last place her, her phone was found. Uh, you know, the signal. Now, I don't know how all that stuff works. But guess what? No phone, no Casey, no nothing. You know why? Because her mama was once knew God, left God, and didn't teach her kids how to pray, didn't teach her kids how to be safe. <clears throat> when they're Googling. <laughs> Sorry, Brother Becker. What I feel. I'd rather have my kids praying, singing, shouting the victory than worrying about when the preacher's going to shut up so I ain't going to get on my Facebook account. All right. Yes, sir. When your pastor stands up, it's a percent. That's right. When an evangelist comes in and you, it ain't got to be me, anybody. And they're preaching the truth of God, word, you ought to be behind them 100%. Oh, that's right. Yes, sir. That's it. Yes. yes. And if I was, if I was going to make this my home church, I'd be behind it 100%. Oh, and say, Brother Becker, here's my family. Here's my soul, Brother Becker. If you see something in my life, let me know. I must be saved. Yes. yes. Do you really want to be saved today? Yes. You really want to hear God say, "Well done." Amen. <clears throat> you better follow behind the pastor. That's right. right. <clears throat> People scare me when they say they heard from God. Yes. Man, my heart just breaks. Preachers, the worst, worst, worst ones of, of them all. They come to their pastor. Pastor, I. I heard from God, man. I, I heard from God, brother. God wants me to start a church. God wants me to be the youth pastor. You better watch them. Brother Beck, you better watch your women that come up to you. Brother Beck, I got a word for you, brother. <sighs> Praise God. Hallelujah, Brother Beck. I got a word for you. You better watch them women. You better watch them. Well, I'm here to tell you, the devil will use anything to creep up in the church. That's right. To hinder the pastor, to point out. You know what happens to people getting pointed out? Them stand up and rebuke them before all that some will fear. That's right. You know what? You know what happened? Okay. If the pastor done that, man, they would cut him off. He wouldn't have a church no more. You know why? Because people got their feelings out too much. I'm preaching to somebody today. Hallelujah. You need to let this man be your pastor and take all reins off of him. He's not a blinded mule. A mule. All right. He ain't a blinded watchman. Man, you get ready to take your mules on a, on a buggy ride, and what do they do? They put blinders on the side of their head. You know what that's for? To keep them going straight. 
And if that rain hits them a little bit to the right, they go to the right. If it hits them a little bit to the left, they go to the left. That's what you need to be. You need to have some blinders on. And say, Pastor, my eyes are with you. I'm with you 100%. If we all can stand this morning. Sorry, I've been a little lengthy. But if this man of God tells you to do something, and it's scriptural, and you don't do it, his blood is off, his, your, your blood is off of his hands. I said, your blood is off of his hands. He says, Thus sayest God, and you don't do it. Hallelujah. He's not the one to blame if your children are set in hell when God comes back. Mama, Daddy, Grandma, and Grandpa don't have the pastor for breakfast, lunch, and supper. Lift him up, pray for him. Fast for him. Yes. He's got enough on his own. Get behind him 100%. Say, Brother Becker, I'm with you. Don't be like some that's come and gone. When everything's going good, man, I'm right here with you, brother. We're we'll reading that after supper. When we're going to eat, man, we'll. And then when he says, don't do this and don't do that, you break it off with him. Yeah. And you run. I want to let you know, damnation lies ahead of you when you break it off from the man of God Amen. in the wrong way. And you don't make it right. I'm telling you, we got to make it right. If you have alt against this man right here, you need to make it right today. If this is your pastor and you can't trust him, you need to make it right. You need to repent. That's right. Hallelujah. If you call this home church and you're not behind him 100%, you need to repent. Because this man right here is carrying your blood right here on his hands. And he's saying, Thus saith God, don't be a Jezebel in the house of God. Don't be a prophet killer. I want you to know I love this church. I pray for this man every day, his family every day. Have me and him ever crossed? Yes, we have. But you can ask him. We both made it right. You know why? Because I can't be crossed with the preacher. I can't be crossed with the man of God. And you can't either. Rebecca, I don't know how to close. I'm just going to turn it over to him. I'm going to tell you. You got to have a preacher. Yes. If you're going to be saved, you got to have a preacher. That's right. You got to have a pastor. That's right. To lead and guide you in all truth. 